And now, stay tuned for the best of Carson. From Hollywood, The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. This is Ed McMahon, along with Doc Severinsen and the NBC Orchestra, inviting you to join Johnny and his guest, Jimmy Buffett. And from Willard, Missouri, C. Willow Zimmerman. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Tommy. I don't know how to tell you this, kid. You haven't got the stuff tonight. I'm taking you out. <laughs> Congratulations, Tommy. I'm Thank a you, magnificent Johnny. serious. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have never had a designated guest host. Can I? Does this mean I can come and guest manage Saturday? The first Anytime game of the series? Anytime you want. Anytime. The New York fans, I don't know. You just got here a few minutes ago. There's some New York fans outside that are detailing your car with a, with a gold fork. <laughs> can you stick around after I finish the monologue sure, and I'll talk happy some baseball? To. Yes, sir. Thank you. Stay with Thank us. You. We'll be right back. Thank you very much. Tommy said he could stay for a while. They're holding his table at the Pizza Hut. <laughs> Was that a great last game last night? Oh, wonderful. Oh, okay. you see? Now, the Mets are a marvelous baseball team. They are a, a magnificent team. Could have gone either way. The problem, I think, last night are some of the Met players' names. Now, you can't take a pitcher named Ron Darling seriously. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's tough when the manager yells from the dugout, throw strikes, darling. <laughs> and I knew the Mets were in trouble last night when their offensive strategy was a thousand points of light. <laughs> no, apparently I think that the Mets were a little shook by the suspension of Jay Howell, you know, the pitcher. And the Mets last night would not allow any foreign substances in their gloves, like baseballs. <laughs> Holy fans. LA fans are a little bit cruel. You know, 60,000 people giving strawberry a raspberry. Last night, think of that. Out. I feel sorry for the Mets. How would you like to have to go back to New York today and face 100,000 teed off New York cab drivers? <laughs> anyway, we're going to talk some more baseball later with Tommy. He's going to come out, and so we'll start with a regular uh, part of the show. I'll take the uh, first question from Judy Woodruff. Oh, well, I thought it was the debates. <laughs> the big debate is tonight, right? Right. The last debate between George Bush and Michael Dukakis. Now, funny thing, New York uh, poll has uh, Bush ahead of Dukakis. The Washington poll has Dukakis ahead of Bush. The National Enquirer has Elvis ahead of both of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they say it's a strange campaign. Now, they say, some of the media says that Dukakis won the first debate and he went down in the polls. Then they say Benson won the second debate and they went further down in the polls. So tonight's debate is crucial. If Dukakis wins tonight, he's through. <laughs> um, both candidates took it pretty easy yesterday. I understand Vice President Bush was out at the... Uh, the Dodgers-Mets game. You see, he went there to show that he's unconcerned about the debate tonight. And Dukakis, to prove how relaxed uh, he is, uh, last night he loosened his tie before he went to bed. <laughs> um, now, I, uh, now, I think Dukakis' strategy tonight is to be more aggressive and attack. Dukakis is going to say, 
I know George Bush, and you're no George Bush. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I think you can look for both candidates to make some very big promises tonight. I understand Dukakis is going to promise affordable housing for everyone in the country, and Bush is going to promise not to die. <laughs> <laughs> Did you read what Dan Quayle said today in, in the news? He said he's going to be his own man now. He said he, the other people have been handling him, his media advisor. He says, I've reached my snapping point, and they're not going to tell me what to do anymore. And Quayle said that at the same time that James Baker was drinking a glass of water. It, <laughs> Job, right? What? Ventriloquist joke. That's right. right. <laughs> That's what it was, a ventriloquist joke. <laughs> I thought that was so clever and went right in the dumper. <laughs> well, that's the way it goes. I don't know. The Coyle's a nice man. I don't know him, but I don't know if he has a... <laughs> Harpo Mark's alive? <laughs> quack, quack. <laughs> I... I, Quay, I don't know if he has the stature to be vice president. Doesn't he look like he should be standing next to a Buffalo Bob? <laughs> I usually try to stay out of these political things, but I, after thinking about it carefully, I've decided that Bush and Quayle will be better for the monologue. If nothing else. <laughs> Here's a news bulletin that just came over the wire. It is now day 44 of Jesse Jackson's captivity. And D Dukakis promises he will be released after Election Day. Uh, can, I look, can I look a little strange today? I'm, I'm off. I went to bed last night, woke up at 5.30 this morning. Some guy was mowing his lawn. I couldn't believe it. I mean, it was an idiotic thing to do. I put a pillow over my head, and the sound just kept droning on and on. I got out of bed, then I realized I'd fallen asleep with the electric toothbrush in my mouth. <laughs> I don't know, it's just a, a silly joke. There's some, um, <laughs> some more bad news for Robin Givens. Apparently, Mike Tyson took every penny he had yesterday and bet it on the Mets. <laughs> anyway, tonight. We got a great show tonight. We're going to talk with Tommy Lasorda. We have Jimmy Buffett here tonight. <laughs> Kevin Pollack. And a lady you'll meet shortly. So stay where you are. We will be... <laughs> take just a half a minute to wish you a happy 30th anniversary. This is the anniversary of 30 years together. Yeah, yeah. Bust here. Wow. 30 years. Together. They don't think that's a wedding, a marriage. No, 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 no. no, no, no. It's Ed and I being together 30 years, a, a record that we have not uh, kept. Anywhere we, else. Yes, that's true. <laughs> You've already met our first guest. I would guess either one of the presidential candidates would have killed for the amount of prime time <laughs> that this gentleman has had in the past couple of weeks. Uh, Tommy Lasorda. In his 12 years managing the Los Angeles Dodgers, he's led the team to three World Series, and he'll begin his fourth World Series this Saturday at Dodger Stadium, the first two games against the Oakland A's. Would you welcome Tommy Lasorda? <laughs> Congratulations again. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you very much. I want to thank you for coming because I imagine, I'm just guessing, it might have been a late night last night. How, late, how late was it? Well, I think my wife and I got back home about 2.30, quarter to 3 this yeah. morning. You had all the guys, I understand, out to one of your restaurants? That's right. We yeah. all, the whole team and their wives and their families, we all went to the Tommy Lasorda restaurant over in South Pasadena. And we had a wonderful time. Did you pick up the tab? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, those guys can eat. Oh, I, I guess so. Not, not 
How about you? They must have learned from their skipper. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you've been asked this question so many times. All the sports writers, the media said, you guys were underdogs going into this thing. You were playing by your description and a lot of your players. Even Oral Hershiser said last night, he said, I think the Bet and the Mets are the best team in baseball. You guys came out and said that, and yet you beat them. How they did are. That, how they did are, that? without a doubt, the best team in the National League. But how come they didn't win? Because they didn't play well against us. They beat us 10 of 11 times I, I know. during the season. And everybody, I can remember we were playing the Giants in the last three games of the season, and I had to go into the clubhouse and they have the, uh, the game on the radio, I mean, uh, coming through the clubhouse. Right. And I heard Vince Scully talking about the Mets. And he said, they're leading the National League in home runs. They're leading the National League in ERA, total bases, stolen bases, everything but stolen towels. And I'm going, oh, my <laughs> God, we got to play that ball club? <laughs> but you know something, Johnny? It was yeah. amazing. I told the ball club about when the first, first time it ever occurred that a guy who was the real favorite and was upset was when David slew Goliath. And uh, I, can, I can picture in those days... Everybody was betting their rocks on Goliath. <laughs> Brady de Cordova was there. He knew, <laughs> knew them personally. And that is the first time ever that the underdog won, and it has continued ever throughout. Since. Yes, and we did. I was very, very proud of our team. It was a tremendous victory, and it was great to bring the World Series back to Los Angeles, it sure where is. it belongs. Yeah. Well, you and you it's amazing. I assume everybody, you know, you uh, won those two games in New York, and I'm sure everybody's, now they're coming back to Los Angeles, they're going to have the home field advantage, and, and you lost that first one, and last night going to that game, you're dead even again. Uh -huh. was, that a, was that a real letdown, not, not polishing it off on the uh, Well, when the we, sixth play, game? we played our sixth game, we were as flat as pancakes. We yeah. just didn't hit well, we didn't pitch well, we didn't play defense well. Is there but any particular reason those, those strange things happen? Nobody knows. If uh, you knew, you could really be successful in this game if you knew whenever your team was going to have that low. We had two tremendous games, especially when in that 12-inning game. And I'm going to tell you something, Johnny. This guy back here said to me, are, are, are you nervous because they're rushing you? Yeah. I said, nervous. I said, pal, I was nervous in that 12th inning in New York when I put Bulldog Hershiser in that game and knowing that I didn't have another picture. picture. That's right. You were down to how old was out? He had pitched seven and two-thirds innings the night before. Right. And if that guy, McReynolds, walks and ties the game, and we got to go five innings... That's it. Tommy hangs himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when did you put the name, uh, the Appalachian Bulldog on Hershiser? I gave it to him about five years ago. He was struggling, and he came into my office. I brought him in for a talk. And I said, I'm going to tell you something, son. Put this in your mind. Picture this in your mind. We're playing the Atlanta Braves, and their bases are loaded and two outs, and we've got them beating the top of the ninth inning two to one. And I bring you in from the bullpen, and Dale Murphy is the hitter. And the guy on the PA system says, now pitching for the Dodgers, Oral Hershiser. Murphy can't wait until you get there. <laughs> but the now, Oral Hershiser. Now I bring you in with a two to one game, and Murphy's waiting, and he hears, now pitching for the Dodgers, Bulldog Hershiser. <laughs> I said, he's going to say, hold it, wait a minute. Madman Hershiser, something right. like that. And he started to growl when I started calling yeah. him that. He and really he... thinks he's a bulldog. Yeah. Speak... <laughs> Speaking of the motivational stuff, now you've said, I, I've seen a lot of, a lot of uh, interviews you've given, and you said, well, you didn't win the game. The players out there won the game. I had nothing to do with it. The players did it. That's right. Well, that's like saying we don't need Tommy Lasorda. Did no, that, but I mean. that's, not, that's not the point. Yeah. They throw the ball, they hit the ball, and they right. catch the ball. But my job, my responsibility, is get them to believe in themselves. Yeah. Get them to put forth all the effort that they have, to put the team number one in their desires. Because as I tell our players, individualism wins trophies, yeah. but teamwork wins pennants. And if they can be proud of that uniform they're wearing, then I've done my job. And I tell you, motivation is very, very important. I believe this as much as I believe I'm breathing, that everybody in this country, from the President of the United States on down, needs to be motivated at some time or another. And the guy said to me, you believe in motivation. When did you start thinking about motivation? I said, I knew the day that I could motivate a ball player. I was managing Spokane at the Pacific Coast League, yeah. and we're playing in Tucson. We got them beat 3-2 to two in the bottom of the eighth inning, and they have the bases loaded. And I had a little left-hand pitcher on the mound named Bobby O'Brien. 
And I thought, now would be the time to go out and get this guy fired up. I need to get this out. So I ran out to the mound. And I said, Bobby, if the heavens could come apart and you could hear the voice of the big Dodger in the sky talking to you, and he says to you, Bobby, this is the last hitter you're going to face on earth, and you're going to die, and you're going to come to heaven with me. I said, son, how would you like to go facing the Lord? Getting this guy out or giving up a hit? He said, I want to go facing the Lord, getting this guy out. I said, then how do you know that you're not going to die after you make this next pitch? So if you're going to die, I want you to die getting this guy out. And I ran back, and I ran back to the bench. And before I got in the dugout, the guy got a base hit, two runs scored. They went ahead four to three. And when I went to take him out, I said, where did I fail? And when I got out there, I said, what's wrong, son? And he looked at me and he said, Skip, you had me so afraid of dying, I couldn't concentrate on the hitter. <laughs> now, that is motivation. <laughs> if I can get them to believe they're going to die, I certainly can get them to believe they're going to play. If Oral Roberts would have had you, he'd have had the $8 million over the weekend. <laughs> I was almost ready to stand up and sing the Star Spangled Banner when you were going through that motivation. Um, it means a lot. Yeah, obviously it does. Now, last night, uh, when Hershiser, I guess it was the next to last pitch, he hit the, the next to last batter, right? Yeah, he hit Mazzelli. What would have happened? How far would it have had to gone? If you had scored a run, would you now go out and tell Oro he's a, uh, you're going to yank him? Yes. You if, would they, if the other team had scored a run, just one run, Jay Howe was going to be in. I see. Yes. Now, about that whole pine tar thing. We, you know, about Jay Tao, uh, Jay Tao, Jay, uh, Howe. Jay Howe. <laughs> Using the pine tar. Right. He says a lot of pitchers use it. They do. It's well known. He said it was bad weather in New York and he was, right. uh, the rosin bag wasn't working. Now I hear Jim Palmer say from the booth that pine tar does do little things with the well, ball. Did Jim Palmer ever use pine tar? He says he didn't. Well, then how does he know? <laughs> I used it. What? I used it. Now you pitch. You were a pitcher. I used it. You and did. pine tar does absolutely nothing to make the ball move in a different manner. Well, why you use I, it then? Tom? To get a better grip on the ball. That's the same reason why you use the rosin bag. Yeah. To get a better grip on the ball. Not one person, not one batter the entire season has ever asked to see the ball thrown by Jay Hal. So that's indicative that the ball wasn't doing anything uh, out of the ordinary. Yeah. He did get one extra day they took off. Um, yes, yeah. it was very nice of the yeah, uh, you, president you didn't to do need that. Him last night. We haven't used him since. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> since he was thrown out of the game, we haven't used him. <laughs> Stay with us a couple of minutes. We're going to do this. Here's a word about women. Okay, we're talking with Tommy Lasorda. First of all, before you leave, I want to thank you for coming tonight because I know your demands on your time must have been tremendous this entire day and probably happy to do it John yeah. believe me the last two years when the season ended I no longer was able to put that uniform on yeah then we got in the playoffs and there were 22 major league teams who were watching us yeah. and starting Saturday there'll be 24 watching us <laughs> and I'm happy to be part of those two are you the first game is Saturday uh, Oakland A's now it's all even again Right. Uh, something happens, doesn't it, in series? I mean, teams can rise to the occasion, and it's those goofy little things that happen that can swing the game. Some teams get cold. Their pitchers don't pitch well. Their batters fail to hit like the Red Sox yeah. in the playoffs. They didn't hit uh, up to their capabilities, and of course... Can your guys keep this high now through today, tomorrow? And that's up, my job. Up till Saturday? That's my job. How do you do it? Keep telling them. Just keep telling keep making them believe. Keep hollering. Keep shouting. Keep screaming. Yeah. You got to make them believe. Are I you... told them, I told them when we, when we were two and one. I said, let me tell you something. We need two more games. We're two yards offshore. Right. I said, I'm going to tell you a story about a guy that was in a boat and he was a thousand yards offshore and the boat capsized. Mm. And he swam with all the heart and all the drive and the determination that he had. And he got two yards offshore and he drowned. He should have drowned when the boat went over. <laughs> but you guys are two yards offshore. I don't want you to drown. I want you to get up to the shore. Well, that makes sense, isn't it? <laughs> All right. I'll tell you what. From now on, when I come out every night to do this monologue, I'm going to remember, if I don't get laughed tonight, I'm going to die. <laughs> And be taken away. How about that? Look what I got. Hey, thank you. That, Look uh, at this. Uh, hey. Look at this. How about that? That's my own shirt. It's got yeah. my number in the back of it. This is your own shirt? Yeah. Well, I'll try to grow into it. Yeah. Tommy says this is his own shirt. And I'm going to tell you something, Johnny, very quickly. Yeah. 
Right now, this may not be worth much money. If you can buy those in the store for yeah. a very little amount. But someday, it could be worth a lot of money. And I'll tell you why. A couple of years ago, I was speaking at a sports back when in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Right. And a guy walks up to the dais and he said, Tommy, my name is Dr. Linsler. I'm a doctor here at LSU. All my life, I've been a Dodger fan. I said, well, thank you, sir. He said, all I've ever wanted to own was a Dodger hat. I said, fine, doctor. I said, a lot of people ask me, when I get back to Los Angeles, give me your hat size, I'll send you one. He said, would you do that for me? I said, yes, sir, I'll do it. He said, I'd like to do something for you. I said, hey, you don't have to do anything for me, doctor. I said, I'll send you the hat. He said, I really would like to do something for you. I said, what do you want to do for me, doctor? He said, I'd like to give you a free gallbladder operation. <laughs> So if I get a free gallbladder, how much would it cost you to go to the hospital to get a free gallbladder operation? Hang on to that, you might get a triple bypass. Hey, I could... <laughs> Good luck, Mr. Thank, Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Well, motivation. Are you motivated? Motivated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was almost ready to stand and do the national Let's anthem. Get <laughs> okay, we're going to be right back after this. Stay where you are. Next guest is a charming lady who lives in Willard, Missouri. And uh, we received a letter uh, telling us that she was quite a character, so we invite her to the program. Would you welcome C. Willow Zimmerman? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> you watch him all the time, huh? Do you watch yeah. me too? Yeah. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> You're not. Sea <laughs> Willow? May I call you Sea Willow? Yes, you may. Yeah. Because I'm the only Sea Willow in the United States. It's an unusual name. Yes. The, there's one other girl, but she don't spell her name like I do. Uh -huh. She just spells S-E-A-W-I-W-L-A. -W -W uh -huh. But I'm a body of water in a willow tree. Sea Willow. Sea Willow. Yeah. That's sea a pretty Willow. name, too. I like that name. Yes. Uh -huh. So I understand, believe it or not, somebody told me. Mm -hmm. Now, you're and what? And you're in your 80s? I'm 87. 87. 87. Oh. And I hear. I hear this was your very first plane trip? Yes. Never been on an airplane? I never had been on an pla airplane before. Well, how'd you and, like it? And when we first started out, it was like the old 1915 Fords. It just bump it, bump, bump, bump. <laughs> and then later on... Well, we certainly I, all remember those. Yeah. <laughs> and then later on, I had to go to the restroom, and boy, howdy, I was like everybody else. I missed the pot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, those, those restrooms and airliners are not... No, I know. Very good and, for that kind of stuff, and, are they? Especially at the back end. Yeah. Really yeah, the back end really wobbles. <laughs> uh, the, the clouds were beautiful. Yeah. Well, it's nice to have you out here. <laughs> yeah. Now, somebody told me that you, you, you still cook. You do some oh, cooking. Oh, yes, I cook. And uh -huh. somebody told me you have a recipe yes. that you do it for Thanksgiving. Uh huh. And, and since I the holidays are coming the, up. Uh, I want to give you the real recipe, and I. Because I don't want no mistakes. Okay. So um, uh, it's a turkey dressing. Turkey dressing. And uh, you don't need no thermometer. It's three eggs, sli slightly beaten, and one small bell pepper chopped up, uh -huh. and one half uh, cup of diced onion, and three and a half cups of popcorn, unpopped, three um, cups of raw rice, one teaspoonful of parquet margarine, salt and pepper to taste, and mix in the ingredients in order. Listen, stuff loosely and bake at 350 degrees until the popcorn pop blows his ass off.
<laughs> you know, you're a little bit of the poet in you, uh, see, Willow? And then it's done, huh? That's the way to tell. Well, that's, yeah. that's, that's pretty definite. Well, I, I, and I'll tell you this morning, yeah. your small gout here was so thick oh, yeah. that I had to get a Kleenex and, and clean out my hearing aid. Yeah, that we do have bad air out here, don't we? Yeah, we sure well, do. I couldn't see the mountain. Yeah, well, we do have mountains out here. Uh, somebody has some. Somebody said you, you don't drive a car much anymore. Oh, this, no. This is the way you get around? Yeah, that's me. This is and you I'll driving? Tell you what, yeah. Um, what is this, a lawnmower? My, my neighbor loves me to uh, bake bread uh -huh. and apple pie and stuff like that and bring it to them, and I just hop on my lawnmower, and away I go. Well, don't, don't, don't. That's pretty nice. No, no license. No license at all? No license, huh? Do you have a regular driver's license? And uh, I uh, used to for yeah. a quarter, yeah. and then I, uh, uh, they run out. And so now then, I got one for ID, just a backseat driver. I don't oh. drive. Oh, I see. Yeah. Now, uh -huh. somebody told me that you, for a while, your house was uh, not very modern. You didn't have running water. You didn't have electricity. Or... Well, I um, um, had a well, and it was awful good water. Yeah. So I didn't put the water in the house until two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. And we haven't had electricity since 1954. And uh, it's a rural electric. Yeah. And um, I, d I got a bathtub, but I just... Uh, bore a hole in the side of the water, and you carry the water in and pull the plug and let it go after you take your bath. See, it's so much easier. So you have no plumbing, you mean? You just... No, I don't want to pollute the water. So you just let the water go outside the house? Into oh, the... yes, uh-huh. That water's my raspberries. Yeah. Well... <laughs> now, this, I assume, is your, is your, uh... Uh-huh. Is your bathroom or part of your bathroom? Uh huh. You still yeah, have. I'm, I'm the only one in the in the, my. Uh, I didn't uh, know they still had outhouses. I'm the only one in my um, uh, neighborhood that's got an outside ha house. How many of you know have never seen an outhouse? That's what it is. Yeah. And you go out there and uh -huh. now, how about when it's uh -huh. cold, in uh -huh. the winter? You, uh -huh. Doesn't that a problem? No. Uh uh. Yeah. It's not heated, is it? Uh huh. Yeah. This is. You have heat in this? And then uh, whenever uh, spring comes, it's the first house you clean in the spring. Oh, I would guess so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would guess so. Now, you, you, were, uh, you were married for a long time. You've been a widow since... Uh... I've been a widow 14 years. 14 years. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, I met Fred uh, at a party right after the First World War. Yeah. And um, uh, he was uh, playing cards with the... Uh, Three more men. Uh -huh. And when I walked in, why, uh, there was some guy just uh, looking a hole through me. And uh, I told this girl that was with me, I said, hey, let's get out of here. Yeah. But in two weeks later, why, he um, met me. He did. Over at his niece's. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, how'd you know? We courted how'd you, how'd you... 18 years. You courted 18 years? We courted 18 years. He was a farmer, and I wanted to go to school and get an education. And so, therefore, I kept a working and going to school, and he kept a farming. And then finally, uh, after 18 years, we got married, and he wore out one buggy and two cars. In all of that time? All that Just time. courting? Uh-huh, yeah. What was it like courting that uh -huh. light long ago? What did you do when you courted? Did you go to dances or what? Oh, no, we uh, went to parties. Back then, the people had parties in their home. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't do like that new now, run up and down the... Uh, highway in a car. Yeah. <laughs> I think they call that cruising. Yeah. Kids go, you didn't cruise in those no, days, huh? No, we never cruised that way. Uh -uh. Well, did you have, uh, did you have, what kind of refreshments? Did you have alcoholic beverages or anything like that? No. No, never. Whenever we had a party, we had cake and lemonade. Cake and lemonade? Yes. Well, that sounds and, really nice. And uh, sometimes, and then in the wintertime, we would have uh, parties and uh, with the popcorn and, and string put it in the turkey, and, huh? And, put it in the turkey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you never had a glass of wine or a. No, we never had no wine. We didn't believe in that. Yeah. No. Uh. Uh. Well, if, but if, I tell you what. Yeah. The, the um, oldest winery in the United States is at Harmon, Missouri. I didn't know that. Yes, right there on the Missouri River. Uh huh. Yeah. But you've never had an alcoholic drink in all of your age.